Hi everyone, I'm Mario, and today we're going to explore a way to get more accurate collision detection in our Ruby 2D games. We're going to be implementing hitboxes. Let's take a look at this example. I've got this picture of a fish which we're going to use as the character, and here's what the code looks like so far. So I'm rendering out the fish from this image, we're placing it on the screen, and when we move the mouse, we're going to check to see if the mouse position uh, is within the fish. And if it is, we're just going to change the background color. And if it's not, then we're going to change it back. Let's run the program and see what happens. So I'm moving my cursor now. And as you can see, as I get close to the fish, it changes color. And on some spots in the fish, it looks like it works quite well. I'm having to move the cursor really quite close before it detects. But because the image is a square, there'll be some points where I'm really quite far away. So here you can see I'm nowhere near uh, the image and it's still detecting. And there'll be some spots here, you can see that I'm a mile away um, and it's not detecting at all. And the reason why that happens is all we're looking at when we do this basic collision check, when we use this contains method, is to see if the, if the cursor is in the box that we're drawing for the image. And the image obviously is transparent, but that's not taken into account. So let's look at a way where we can use some hitboxes to improve this detection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some squares. I'm going to just start with one. And I'm going to position that square at the same position where the fish is. We're going to make it red just so we can see. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to create a series of these squares. This one's currently way too big, but I want to create a series of these squares that cover all of the parts of the fish. At the moment, I can't see it very well, so I'm going to make it transparent just so we can see um, how well we're covering that sprite there. So to do that, what I'm going to do is rather than using the color red, I'm going to replace it with RGB values. So red would be, uh, red, green, blue. And the last bit is the opacity. So let's do 40%. Great. Okay. So you can see um, here's our square. So what my goal is, is to size it down and just move it so it covers the fish. I'm going to start with the tail. We're going to need to move it down and ever so slightly to the right. So slightly to the right, add five here. Can add 45 here. Great, so I'm starting to cover the tail section. If I just make the box quite a lot smaller, it should hopefully cover that quite well. Awesome, great. So you can see now it is covering that tail section. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create uh, a bunch of other boxes and we're going to cover the rest of the fish. The more boxes you have, the smaller they are, obviously the more accurate the detection will be. It'll just take a lot more work. So I'm going to go through now and add a bunch more squares. Awesome, so you can see now I've got a bunch of different boxes. They're overlapping quite a bit in the center, but that's okay. But you can see the shape much more closely resembles um, what the uh, sprite looks like. The next thing to do now is to change the collision detection to work on the boxes rather than the actual fish itself. So let's do that. So rather than seeing if this fish sprite uh, contains these, we're gonna loop through each of the hitboxes and see if any of the hitboxes contain those coordinates. Okay, let's give the program a go now. Awesome, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna mouse close and you can see that when I'm outside of the squares, I'm outside of the fish, 
it's not triggering. And then as soon as I make it into any of these boxes, then it's going to work for us. The awesome thing about this is you can make these as specific as you want, really hug the shape of the sprite. And the other thing as well is you can also use other shapes apart from squares. So this will work fine if you use uh, triangles. Um, you can probably create a much more um, specific shape with the triangle to cover the sprite. Um, it'll just be a bit more work. The last thing to do is just to remove the coloring from the hitboxes just so that we can't see them. And the way I'll do that is I'll just change the first value, the last value here in the color, which is the uh, opacity. So we're going to change it to uh, zero. Awesome. So now we've got that same behavior. You can see it's working really well with the cursor here. As soon as I go in, it changes colors and we can't actually see the hitboxes. The great thing about this technique as well is if you want to debug, you can very quickly turn the colors back on and you can actually see what's happening with the hitbox. As you can see, hitboxes are really easy to implement in Ruby 2D. I hope you found the video useful and I hope you can find a use of this technique in the games that you're making. Until next time, take care.